Moscow, Russia. Second day of tour, September 8, 2019. Today we go to Lavra, about 70 kilometers north of Moscow. Everybody is on the bus and we head out. It is a Sunday morning, so there is very little traffic. As we reach the outskirts of town, we pass one of the famous Russian monuments, the Monument to the Conquerors of Space. It was erected in 1964 to celebrate Yuri Gagarin's orbit of the Earth in space in the year 1961. Immediately after the Space Monument is another very famous monument. I have already made mention of it earlier when I saw a replica of it in the construction on Tverskaya Ulitsa in Moscow for the festivities of the Birthday of Moscow Festival. The name of the monument is Worker and the Kolkhoz Woman, symbolizing the Soviet Socialist Society and the State Farm Collectives. Not long after starting our excursion, we leave the confines of Moscow, headed out into the country. After about an hour of travel, we are approaching the town of Sergiev Posad, in which the Trinity Lavra of St. Sergius is located. The monastery was initially founded in 1377 by Sergius of Radonezh, and the town that has grown up around the Trinity Lavra Monastery is named after him. Our local tour guide told us as we approached the Trinity Lavra that her parents would bring her here when she was a child. And she expressed that what a wondrous sight it was to a little girl to see the Lavra Monastery complex as they approached. To her, she said that with all the beautiful buildings and the gold covered onion shaped domes, it seemed like she was arriving at a fairy tale land as it seems still today and has for centuries. Although the town is named Posad, the original meaning of Posad was the settlement inside a cordoned off area by ramparts or a moat and was a small city in and of itself. It was its own distinct community, but over the years the community extended outside the original confines and today it is part of the name of the city that surrounds the original Posad. We have arrived and it is really a very stunning spectacle. We enter through the originally called Red Gateway or Fine Gateway Tower, a defensive tower until the revolution. And at that time it became the Holy Gateway because only clergy and nobles could enter in this gate. There is another gate off to the side for ordinary people. Obviously, that policy has long changed because this is now the gate we enter in. The St. Sergius Lavra has been the most significant monastery in Russia for centuries for the Russian Orthodox Church. It is a spiritual center and the architecture and ornamentation is such that it is often referred to as the Russian Vatican. It is a well-fortified monastery as was necessary due to all the struggles over the centuries. But now a bit of history as I walk through the complex and identify the different structures. Saint Sergius was born into money but lived a youth of solitude. His parents had passed by the time he was 23 and at that time, he and his brother left the desert in search of a hermitage. 
a hermit dwelling. And they found a clearing in a forest on a small hill, which they called Makovets, also actually a term indicating the top of a hill. They built a cell, which is a place to reside, and a small church dedicated to life-giving trinity, and that was the birth of the monastery. It was very austere, and the older brother no longer wanted such stark conditions, so he left for a monastery in the city. Sergius, his name still Bartholomew at that point, continued by himself for several more years. He then took his monastic vows and changed his name to Sergius. In spite of the fact that he was very isolated, word of his incredible ascetic life began to spread and pious monks started to come to him for guidance. Then more and more came as well as farmers and ordinary city dwellers. They came for his blessing and advice. A short interlude in the history to talk about the refectory. I had not realized it before, but a refectory is a dining hall. This refectory is the most elaborately decorated dining hall I have ever had the fortune to see. This one was built 300 years after St. Sergius died and was commissioned by Peter the Great. Back to the history. His monastic community grew and more cells were constructed and he built many of them himself. He made boots and habits for the monks, left water for all the monks at their cells each day, and also baked. Over the centuries, the monastery actually gained fame as a bakery. The sick and poor came to him for consolation and guidance. He was considered a saint even during his lifetime. He tried to limit the number of monks to 12, but would not refuse anyone, as one evening he had a vision which told him the number of monks should be the same as the number of birds. So it continued to grow. His first disciple was Saint Nikon and was his successor. The current Trinity Cathedral was built over the exact spot where the first little wooden Trinity Church was built and adjoining the cathedral off to the side is the St. Nikon Chapel. Due to the number of monks that had come to the monastery, water was in very short supply. One day St. Sergius, making his way to a ravine just below the monastery, he came upon a small pool of rainwater. He knelt and prayed for water and a bubbling spring arose. Apparently many of the faithful who were sick or afflicted drank from the spring and were healed so it became a source of miracles and is called the Holy Well. As you can see here, people still come to drink from it today. As I was leaving the monastery, I saw they were selling some bakery goods. I only found out in my research today for the video that the monastery is famous for its bakery. Fortunately, and unknowingly of its significance at the time, I decided to stop and I purchased a very tasty muffin. Just before exiting out the Holy Gate, I got a nice photo of this monk with his pastoral staff, a staff they carry to indicate a high position in the monasterial hierarchy. I am now exiting the monastery through the very impressively painted Holy Gate on my way to lunch. The paintings are really very impressive.
nesting dolls are a very popular tourist purchase. And here's a lady diligently painting one of her nesting dolls. This is the little marketplace we walk through on our way to our Russian style restaurant. And the words translated are, the word on top means fair or a marketplace, and then Russian souvenir. Nesting dolls, otherwise known by the name of matryoshka, or more commonly babushka, are dolls used to illustrate the unity of body, soul, mind, heart, and spirit. It is a centuries old art, but once again, after the revolution, it fell out of favor. But this, the most Russian souvenir, was reborn in the late Soviet Union, the latter part of the 1900s. Hello, ladies. When lots of foreign tourists began visiting the country and craftsmen started reviving old workshops. There are five different styles of matryoshka. And a surprising fact is that the most famous was actually born right here in Sergeyev Posad. At the back of the restaurant, Victor shows me the way into our own special room where we will have lunch. We have a young, beautiful Russian girl for a waitress dressed in traditional garb. Ray and I have a beer and then we are served borscht, which is a soup consisting of beetroot, giving the soup its color. They also add in beef stock and sauteed vegetables. Then the main dish of salmon and potatoes and finally a crepe covered with sweet sauce that they called a pancake. It was all very tasty. Once lunch was done I headed outside where I had a photo taken of myself and a true Russian doll. And then it was back on the bus and time to head back to Moscow. At this time I would like to add I found an online wonderfully written history of St. Sergius. I actually found it to be quite moving and emotional for me. Not sure why, but I would urge anyone watching this video who is slightly interested in this very unique individual and this incredible journey of his and the remarkable growth of his Trinity St. Sergius Labra Monastery to go to saint-sergius.org and read his story. On the way back into Moscow, we again passed the Worker and Kolkhoz Woman Monument, and an additional bit of information about it is, it was created to crown, and did crown, the Russian Pavilion in the 1937 World's Fair in Paris. And the pavilion at the fair was located in a somewhat prophetic position, located directly across from the German Pavilion. Again, passing the Monument to the Conquerors of Space, an interesting note is that among the numerous statues of famous Russians involved in their space program, they also have at the base of the monument a statue of Laika, the first dog in space. We have arrived back in Moscow and a few hours after returning to the hotel, we head out for the evening activities. And the first thing we do is an exploration of some of the really well-decorated metro stations. All 
of the stations are very nicely kept. We are headed to a few that have fabulous artwork. I had my doubts to begin with, but Victor emphasized that I would appreciate it, and he was correct. At the first station, there are some beautiful bronze castings showing men of the military, past and present, and there's one of a soldier and his dog, and the dog's nose, obviously having been rubbed many times, and a young farm girl with her chickens, and the chicken rubbed often as well. This is because rubbing the dog's nose, or the chicken, is supposed to bring good luck. A train arrives as we're off to another station, and at this station, the artwork was of a common theme. Many of the paintings showed farm life and the growing of crops. There were wall paintings depicting festive occasions like weddings. And there was also a lot of reference to Lenin and the revolution. We made a couple of stops on this metro line. Our next stop was this one. Some of the artwork was just beautifully painted glasswork. This is another station we traveled to on this line. The final metro station had these amazing ceiling creations. These appear to be mosaic tile creations. It was our final station, and all of the stations were indeed a very impressive display. After the metro station art tour, we head back over to Red Square for a beautiful night viewing. To get to Red Square from the metro station, we passed some of the street Moscow birthday lights and celebrations. As I approach Red Square for the final time on this excursion, one last look at the corner arsenal tower of the Kremlin, the State Historical Museum, and the Resurrection Gate. I head through the Resurrection Gate, headed for Red Square. The Kazan Cathedral, just before the Gum Marketplace. The Gum Department Store Complex is brilliantly lit up. A truly beautiful sight. And beautiful is an appropriate description because red, in Russian, means beautiful. And Red Square is really quite stunning. And other impressive sights are the Savior Tower, an entrance to the Kremlin and the beyond stunning St. Basil's Cathedral. From Red Square, we head down to the Moscow River Observation Walkway, and on the way, they had these very ingenious teeter-totters with flashing lights. 
And I must say, ultimately, I was pretty impressed with the observation walkway over the Moscow River. It was quite beautiful. All of today's excursions have now been completed and I head back to the bus for the last time here in Moscow. Tomorrow morning we head for St. Petersburg. There is a video of that experience as well. One last panoramic view from the river observation walkway of the river, the Kremlin, and Red Square, featuring the iconic St. Basil's Cathedral.